one of the most famous novels in history and after receiving rave reviews on Broadway, a new production of To Kill a Mockingbird is coming to the West End. Well, as Rave Sport stars uh, as the show's lead role, Atticus Finch, uh, he's joining us now in the studio. Good morning. Nice to see you. Thank you. Good for morning. Thank today. you for having me. Um, it's, uh, it's funny. Published in 1960, sold 45 million copies worldwide, one of the best-selling novels of all time. Um, and the theme, sadly, the theme couldn't be more relevant now as it was then. Absolutely. I think if you're going to... If you're going to... Um adapt any classic novel or you're going to restage any sort of story which people know, it needs to have a relevance and a pertinence to today. This definitely does for obvious reasons. There's still people of colour being accused and sent to prison for crimes they didn't do. Um, and, yeah, as you say, it's, it's one of those books that everyone knows. And there's very few books like that. If you were to go out and survey 100 people in the street, most people would have heard of To Kill a Mockingbird and Atticus Finch, and mm -hmm. everyone's got an idea of that character in their mind. And now I'm going to come and ruin that for everyone. <laughs> well, I can't imagine that that's going to be the case. But, uh, but I mean, you know, they're... they're, they're Gregory Peck. Yeah. No. Yeah, I've, I've often seen myself as the English Gregory Peck. So um, I'm just really pleased that the rest of the world is realising that now. <laughs> no, look, it, this is... It, it's a different sort of adaptation. Aaron Sorkin, who's adapted the novel, has tried to come at it from a different angle. So the book, it, the, the film is very beloved and uh, Gregory Peck was fantastic. Um, but I think Aaron and me uh, see this character as a small-town country lawyer. He's a, he's a guy with two kids. I've got three kids in my own life, so I know what that's like. I can identify with that. He's trying to do the right thing. And something that Aaron Sorkin, the writer, has done in this adaptation is that he makes Atticus change. He's a different guy than he was at the beginning as he is at the end, and that's really interesting to me. So your character, Atticus Finch, is, is different as to how it is portrayed in yeah. the novel? Well, yeah, I, I think it is. Yeah, I think that... Any, uh, I think what we uh, appeals to us in plays and films is seeing a character realise something, seeing a character discover something about themselves, about the uh, world around them. Um, and, you know, Gregory Peck, as wonderful as, as he is in the movie, sort of had it figured out to begin with. Um, but I like the idea of playing someone who sort of becomes Atticus Finch, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, he's a small-town country lawyer. He gets paid literally in vegetables in this small backwater of Alabama and then gets given this extraordinary case which changes his lives, his children's lives um, around him. And it's, uh, it's a complete joy to do. Defending, defending a, a man who is accused of a crime that he didn't commit. Exactly right. And it's obvious that he didn't commit it. Um, uh, but... Um, because it was the Jim Crow laws in the South at the time, um, it was, if you were... There's a line in it where Tom Robinson, uh, the accused, says, I was guilty as soon as I was accused, being a black man in the Jim Crow South. How were you with the accent, then? I'm just doing my own accent. No, right. no, I'm not, I'm not really, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I, no, it's, it's... Yeah, it's fun. It's a really fun thing to do, to do a, to do a Southern accent. Um, uh, I think, actually, it's easier for English people to do Southern accents, yeah. Southern American accents, than to do... Um, like general American accents. Yeah. Because actually, because I love your accent. Do you? Yeah, I think it's lovely. Thank you. But some people say that the, the Southern American accent is related to the West Country accent. Yeah, yeah. So maybe when you get home, you could do a bit of work on your Southern American accent and come and show the nation tomorrow. What would be, you know, how did you get... Uh, what would be easy to say in a Southern accent, do you think? Um, you could say... Uh, you know, you say, I know. You could say, I know. I know. <sighs> Oh, she can do it. Straight away. Just to, I, know. I know. I know, you see? There you go. Yeah, there you right. go. Perfect. You yeah. can do it. It's easy. See? It's not, <laughs> right. it's not so hard. Yeah. It's funny, you, you, uh, you, a couple of times you threw the name uh, Aaron Sorkin in. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I would have thought, and I'm pretty sure, that this was a big tick for you. Yeah, you definitely. A fan. I'm a big fan of his. You know, he wrote The West Wing, he wrote uh, Social Network, the Steve Jobs movie. Um, you know, he's one of the greatest living writers. And I was lucky enough to be asked to do this, right? So no one had heard me read it before the first day of rehearsal, especially not him. Now, this production is the West End transfer of the Broadway production. Mm -hmm. And on Broadway, the part was played by Jeff Daniels and Ed Harris. So all that Aaron Sorkin had heard read this part was those two movie stars. So then I had to come in on the first day for the read-through with my little script. So I go, well, here goes. <laughs> and, and, and read it and then sort of look up like... Is that all right? Um, Looking at the but, expressions on their face. Yeah, yeah, but I'm still here. Yeah. And, I, and I've opened the show. We are five previews in. Um, and, uh, yeah, audiences are really loving it. It yeah. is 
incredibly expensive. And you understand, you know, the, the nightmare that the British arts, um, well, the world arts went through mm. over the past couple of years, so they've got to recoup their money. But it is really expensive to go to the theatre now. Mm -hmm. You guys have found a way that, for some people, you can help. Yeah, I think that's very, very important. Um, so, obviously, putting on a big show is expensive, as you say. Um, and it is a business, but it's extremely important that we get people into the theatre that wouldn't necessarily go. Uh, and by doing that, you need to make tickets available. So for every performance, we're releasing a, a number of £15 tickets in prime seats for people to come and enjoy. Um, uh, and you can Google that and, and, see, and see how to get those seats. But it's, um, it's great, because one of the things that's so important to me... You know, I remember being a kid and going and seeing plays and being like, I want to do that. That's the thing that I want to do. It was the do. caretaker, wasn't it? It was the caretaker with Michael Gambon. Um, and actually... Um, I went with my dad, who's an actor, Timothy Spall, and he took me backstage afterwards to go and meet Michael Gambon. And um, I couldn't believe it. I was so knocked out by it. And we knocked on Michael Gambon's um, dressing room and he opened the door completely naked. Oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah. And I became an actor. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the story or the message is there. I don't know what the message was, and he, he didn't mention it. I was like, I'm just going to go along with this. There's, my, there's Michael Gambon completely naked. It wasn't like he was like, sorry about this. He was like, yeah, come on in, come in. That's the, naked. That's the acting life for you. It's the acting life, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, that was... Um, life's never been the same since. No. <laughs> like playing in front of a live audience again because you've not done that since like the pandemic it was wicked it was amazing and you know i think theater is a bit like hugging it's like you think you you can sort of live without hugging but your life is completely diminished without it oh. and theater is the same mm. right um and to be back with a thousand people in a room experiencing a story together mm. is really profound and you know i'm always aware when you do plays that i'm up there and I'm saying things which is disturbing the air particles in such a way between you and the person in the audience that if it goes right, neither you or them will ever forget that moment. Yeah. And you only get that in live performance, and that's really special and important. Well, you're actually fulfilling things for you. You're doing really well at the moment, because Trying, Apple TV's Trying, massive hit. Um, season two, when you can... Jason is the part you can, mm. you can get your teeth into a part when you've got season two. Season three, confirmed. Mm. Um, and then you can do your own accent. Yeah, which is a, mass, <laughs> which is a massive relief. I haven't got to do the southern accent. Yeah, so we just finished the third season. I love doing that show. I work with Esther Smith, who I love, and um, it's... Uh, yeah, it's the best. It's really nice to play a version of myself mm. after trying to sort of string Atticus Finch together. It's really nice to just do my own voice, have my own hairdo. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, be myself. It's nice. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, um, uh, Opens on the 31st of March at the Gielgud Theatre in London. Mm -hmm. uh, check for, for those um, more affordable tickets. Uh, in previews now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But please come along. It's a good show, I promise you. And, uh, and I would have thought quite a bit to learn for you. It's a big learn. Mm. But you've got to be careful what you wish for. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Ray. Thank, Thank you. you. All those films are back in the theatre. Thank you very much. <laughs>